you're a man of very many talents and interests and hobbies, uh, one of which I know is the Society of Creative Anachronism. Uh, your wife, Sophia, mentioned it in her interview in episode one and kind of how you inspired her to get into it and or introduced her to it. So can you tell us what the SCA, Society of Creative Anachronism, is and how did you get into it? Oh, okay, cool. I'd love to talk about this. <laughs> um, so the SCA, Society for Creative Anachronism, is this nonprofit group of people. Um, they've been around since the 70s. Wow. Um, what they're dedicated to is to present history, living history, essentially. Um, and it's for people to be able to experience um, history and research in history and to, to live it and to show it to others and ostensibly not just to enjoy it, but to learn from it. Um, if you learn what it's like to live every day, like it's the year 1200, mm -hmm. then it gives you perspective on how, you know, maybe we can do things in society going forward. Um, so it's set up as, it's not strictly European, but it is mostly European. Okay. Um, the, the SCA has a time period and it's basically zero AD to 1600 AD. And so within the group, and it's a worldwide group with a couple million members, wow. um, there's ancient Romans and there's Renaissance ladies and there's uh, knights in shining armor and the whole darn thing and everything in between. And it's focused on just all aspects of that culture, um, arts and sciences, cooking, mm. uh, heraldry, uh, calligraphy, combat, uh, equestrian stuff. Um, farming there's wow. there's some cool groups who like have like little experimental farms that they do everything like they would have done in the 1400s and it it just is a cool group of people well okay people are very nerdy i'm one of them i know um but the things that these people are interested in it's living history in the very best way that um, i would say it's cool actually i think <laughs> nerds are cool in their own way i think everyone's kind of a nerd but I didn't know that. I seriously, my knowledge of it is so limited to just the, I guess, glimpses or I guess ass assumptions from the stories you've told us. So that's really cool to know the kind of the broader um, vision of it, I guess. Well, there's a group in my hometown. Um, it, it, almost every town has a group. Okay. Um, some more active than others. And I used to watch the expositions and things that they would put on when I was a kid. Wow. And um, when I was about 14, I joined and started getting involved in a few little things here and there. Um, and then when I turned 16, um, they I got to be old enough that they would let me start doing heavy armored combat, which is what I've been doing ever since. Wow. Um, ever since I've been doing that stuff. Um, and what that is, is it's actual sports combat. It's fighting full speed, full power, bludgeoning people. And the only difference between this and what it would have been real life is we don't use real steel swords. We make our swords out of rattan, which is like a solid bamboo Okay. Um, that we use so that if you hit someone real hard and it breaks the stick, it doesn't splinter. It kind of just mushes into the fiber. So it's safety thing. So you can get splinters in your eyeballs. Oh, um, that's thoughtful. Yo, no one wants splinters. Um, and we don't use horses because we have to be kind, you know, the animals. And right. The horses wouldn't know what the heck's going on. So we don't right. do that. Um, but it's otherwise, it's real life combat. And it can be one on one um, at a, like a tournament level. Um, we host these big events called wars. Okay. Where you might have a couple hundred or a couple of thousand fighters all on the field and shield balls and arrows flying through the sky and catapults and. Wow. lines of spearmen and pikes and you and your group are going to okay the objective is to take that area over there so we're going to charge and you're just going to run as fast as you can and smash the other person into the ground and hit him in the face with a big stick full power <laughs> and the cool thing is is later on at that night at the camp um they'll probably find you and buy you a beer if you hit them really hard because it's um there's a lot of mutual respect like uh -huh. oh man you really rocked me that Come on over, hang out with my friends and I. You, you're great at what you do. So there's, there's a lot of camaraderie. That's really um, cool. Sorts of events, even though it's based around 
um, you know, for what I enjoy doing, it's based around actually smashing people. Um, I practice weekly, okay. um, well, most weeks, and usually on Sundays. Okay. And there's not a Sunday practice I come back from that I'm not, I don't have a few bruises or wow, maybe a light concussion or <laughs> something. <laughs> it's like a yeah. hardcore sport, you know, it's take football and kind of multiply it by yeah a hundred wow it's so good it's so good and you know the cool thing is too with that and this goes into the combat sides of it and it goes into the all the other things you're doing the way you make your campsite because mm -hmm. uh, when we camp they're private events and they're not so there's no electric light it's all firelight right because wow. we want to keep it period but you create kind of a persona um if you've played dungeons and dragons mm -hmm. you know you make a character right well it's kind of like that same idea except that you keep this as a persona for yourself and you find a time and a place that this person came from and you find their, you, know, you come up with a name and a kind of a history. And then everything that you do in the society, you try to orient towards recreating that persona okay. um, in as much as it's possible. So you wear those particular clothes. Um, maybe you learn to cook in that particular style. Um, I wear specific types of armor and fight with specific types of weapons that work for the persona that I made. Okay. And you put all that together and, and it just, it drives you to go and read more and study the history. And like, man, I wonder what kind of jewelry that, you know, this particular person in this particular place and time would have worn. So you, you go out and you have like an accurate thing hanging around your neck. That's cool. Um, you know, it doesn't usually get to the point where I'm going to cut my hair in a different style. Or something. Right, right. <laughs> like, you know, we still have to go back to work on my Right, right. You still but, have your... <laughs> like, it's, it's so interesting as a way to, as a way to deeply involve yourself. I, I know like the Civil War reenactors do that same kind mm -hmm. of thing, but, you know, that's limited to a few years of American history. Right. This is 1600 years of world history. That's amazing. I have a oh, question. Right. Um need to nerd out about it. I <laughs> oh, so I love excited. it. So, okay, so you're part of a group and you go to events called wars and you practice and you have a persona. So is that persona, like, is that what you chose and wherever you go, you take that with you? Or does that persona from a time and place that your group is a part of? Well, the groups tend to be based on where you live in real life. Oh, okay. Uh, so like every, so I live in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and the whole Las Vegas Valley is a barony, oh. a specific barony. And we have a baron and a baroness and, um, and other people and they're part of a larger kingdom. Oh, okay. So in Las Vegas, we're in this barony called Star Coffin. That's the name of it. And it's part of the kingdom of Kaid, which is Southern California, Hawaii, and um, parts of Arizona. Um, that's Kaid. Um, Oh, parts of Nevada, and then it stops in Arizona. And there's another kingdom over in Arizona, and Oregon's another one, and Washington's another one, and Europe is another one. And so you tend to go with either your local group, mm -hmm. which is going to be based on people. These are your friends and neighbors that you see in real life anyway. Or you go with maybe you're part of a, a larger organization within things. So I'm a member of a, a mercenary company okay. called the Brotherhood of the Wolf, and we're mostly in Southern Nevada, but we're also in Los Angeles and Phoenix and Seattle and around, and we'll get together. So does that mean that each one of us makes a new persona to play with each one of these areas? No. Hmm. The barony or the brotherhood or whatever you're involved in will gather things from all those, all those aspects of history. And that's why we call it creative anachronism. Right. So you can have this, you, you can be hanging out with this ancient Roman dude you know, while you're in your, you know, 1300s French outfit and, yeah. and it all just kind of works together. That's so um, cool. For instance, Sophie, uh -huh. she created a persona and her persona kind of matches with mine as far as their time period. Okay. You know, which is kind of late 12th century people, but she's from the Byzantine Empire. Wow. Her character is, you know, a, a Greek, mm. you know, she's fancy and has nice stuff. Yeah. Whereas my dude is from scotland in that same period um and so you know how do you even tell a story about how the two of you got together in the society well there's 
there was like the Varangian Guard and there was Vikings involved and there's just all this cool stuff. But it makes you think about what was that interplay like and could a, so a lady from Greece and a guy from Scotland have ended up together in that time? And they could have. Yeah. And you actually we read stories in real life about how that works. So my character, essentially, my character, my persona I've had since I was a teenager. Wow. And I've built on it and developed it and been the same. And I have a coat of arms registered to me in the society that no one else is allowed to have and they're mine forever. And I could pass them down to my children if I wanted to. And wow. or they could do their own. Yeah. And it's, so, I mean, yeah, you kind of have one persona. Now, you could have multiple if you wanted. Okay. No one's going to stop you from doing that. You okay. can be as inventive as you want. You could be a samurai and an Aztec princess and a you know, a lady in waiting to Charlemagne's wife or whatever, all at the same time, depending on what day you felt like playing. That is and so, so interesting. Cool. And it just sounds like history on steroids, but in a good way, I guess. Um, yeah. That's really cool. Because another, like when I think of history, you know, when we're learning in school, I had such a hard time. If we're focused on this period, in this country or this area, I'm like, oh, this is going on. But to be able to link it at, well, at the same time in a different area, there were still things going on. It just, it doesn't happen a separate and apart from each other. So this kind of brings it together. And I don't know, that was my question. Yeah, are you gonna be walking around with a Roman while you know, you're in your time period? So it sounds like that could happen. Yeah, well, for instance, our little Brotherhood of the Wolf that we have, we're technically a Viking raiding band, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Works good for my guy who's Scottish. Most of the guys in the group are Viking one way or another. But um, we'll link up shields next to a whole unit of Roman legionnaires. Wow. And Or next to a whole unit of German mercenaries from the 1500s with, like, puffs and slashes on their sleeves. And... You know, we'll lock shields with them and we'll go into battle and it's totally okay. Um, yeah, that's a little inaccurate historic wise, right. but it's not like you can just tell everyone in the world, hey, you're going to be this specific thing. You don't get people to enjoy it that way. Everyone's interested in something else. Right, right. You know, we do have a samurai in the little group I have. Really? You know, in the Brotherhood. Yeah, and the guy's really good. He has full on samurai armor with the big iron like Oni mask and fights with uh, like a big katana type thing wow. it doesn't work at all with us in the shield wall <laughs> you know but he's hell of a good charging right and he's a fantastic guy and he's a great fighter oh, that's... so it just it adds spice to it yes you know yeah what, what's history if it's dead and dusty you got to experience it and live it and apply it to your every day yeah that's really cool